Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Okay, we got uh, some bigs over here, bigs over here, the medium slash small here. So far we're getting, um, it's looking like we're gonna ship two loads. There's way too many to fit one semi load, so we'll probably have between 100 and 125. Decided all those are to sell. I just got to decide on the last three. Okay, we ran 10 out of the pen. Now we're putting these medium ones that were in 10 with the sorted off ones that aren't going to sell from nine. They'll all match the same size and weight pretty much. And that'll be where we sort out to get a, get bigs out of in like three weeks. Okay, here's a calf in one of our starting pens. You can see it standing next to those big ones. That's how much weight they usually gain while they're here. Little ones, big ones. Okay, got the cattle put back. Okay, now we also sorted 4B heifers and steers. Now I'm putting them back in different pens. Gotta count them. They're interested in my pickup. Well, it worked. The conveyor belt is conveying again. Wow! That's a long thing. So for the last couple days, uh, we've been taking apart this shed uh, that blew over in the windstorm uh, basically a whole year ago. So uh, it took us a while to get around to doing this. A lot of manual labor. And maybe there are some other ways to, to deal with it, but we're gonna kind of take take back all the materials, save some of them, dispose of some others. So it's been a nice day to do it though. Sun shining. Got all four of us, Nathan and Kendall are twinning again, just like at Christmas. You can see that pot moving behind the <clears throat> There's still grain bin over there. Nathan's getting it ready. I'm getting these heifers out of the pen. They got their morning feed. They're ready to get on the truck. I think my freight freight liner is the coolest one out of all these lined up. Okay, not a full load today. We have two loads, so gotta get them unloaded and get back and get that next load. Okay, I'm back from my uh, second load, and it's like 20 degrees warmer. One at a time, one at a time. So I get to go inside and eat. I'm only like, you know, 15 minutes late for lunch. I made it in pretty good time. Actually, I just checked, it's only 12.07. So that's, that's not bad. The toddlers get hungry though, you know. They wanna eat. They can't wait till 12.30 like we used to be able to. What do you have to say for daddy? She's always waiting at the gate ready for me to come eat. Okay, so I called the sale barn to find out how the cattle sold. I'm impatient, I can't I can't wait till the check comes. Oh, I don't wanna leave my truck stranded up here. Um, they did weigh um, 
800, 803 pounds. So sold pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if it's the best heifer price we've ever had, but it seems to be going up each time. Uh, I'll have to look what our heifers sold in December for. They were weighing like 790 something. So I'll have to look to see how many dollars difference it was. What I will say, you can see part of that sunset through the back windshield. What I will say is we're selling heifers for the same amount of dollars per pound as what we used to be selling steers for, which a lot of times there's, you know, a 15 cent or something difference on that. So that's fun. I guess to clarify, it also means that the steers are selling for more. Um, but either way, it's a good thing as a backgrounder. Just means it's going to be really expensive to buy calves. <laughs> First calves we bought of 2023. Running them through today. Down to just five more to run through the alley. We're shorting the uh, bigger ones to the right, smaller ones to the left. Because there was some size discrepancy on this group. Well, there was both size discrepancy and some of them were weaned and some of them were fresh off the cow, so that also makes a big difference. Even with feet truck today, the uh, other harsh wagon had an issue on Sunday night, so this is my Monday morning feeding. I finished my load before dad was done loading his. So he's getting his wagon loaded up. Big scoop of hay in there. Okay, now we're loading up the feed truck with the cow ration, which is what it normally does every day. Well, every other day. Okay, I fed the <coughs> cows and piles here. The calves sometimes go and pick at it, but other times a lot of them don't even try. <laughs> it's you! <laughs> Good job! <laughs> Cows. It's fun, huh? Yeah. All bundled up. Cows are coming running. Watch the cows. We're feeding them, okay? See the babies? Yeah. <laughs> so today I am uh, underneath the feed truck. This chain has gotten a little loose on us. Actually, I, I oiled it the other day, which it really needed oil, and then I think that kind of loosened it up enough that uh, it was it was actually jumping a little bit. So I still have some adjustment in this slot of the hydraulic motor so I'm just hopefully as long as these bolts aren't all frozen up it'll be a pretty easy adjustment to just lower that down a little and tighten it up so it's working better. They're not just the easiest to get a wrench on but I'm having to put a wrench on the bolt side. There now I think I can get on this side. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just going to have to hold it on this side and then loosen it from the other. Loosened up. We'll just lower it down. I like easy fixes. I like to have that coffee around. So winter, uh, especially for me, um, there's a lot of little day-to-day -day tasks, you know, that pop up like that loose chain, making sure the feeding equipment is working right and stuff like that. Um, we gotta stay on top of the of the cows, you know, and calves, 
and uh, if there's any sick cattle, you're you're doing all those day-to-day things, um, which Dad and Kendall cattle, uh, cover most of that cattle stuff. Um, so I just uh, come in and help, and, and Greg, you know, we come in and help um, when there's more, just more to, of that stuff to do in a day. And then I, I feed the cows. Uh, currently, I'm feeding the cows every other day out on a field, and we need to get them moved back home. And um, so those things kind of change from day to day. Um, but then um, I'm also just trying to think about the growing season ahead. Um, so I kind of go back and forth between the day-to-day stuff and more longer-term stuff. Um, I recently um, got a bunch of uh, replacement parts for our Great Plains drill. Got our new opener discs from Great Plains. Um, we've had this drill for probably about five years now, so we've, we've put um, a good amount of acres on it. And uh, we've replaced some of the opener discs. Um, and then we, I reshimmed it last spring to get another season out of it. Um, but now we're just um, gonna do the rest of them. So the other day, I, I've got this one taken apart, checking these uh, parallel arm bushings. I found out um, probably most of them are gonna need to be replaced. Got those parts in now, so at some point we'll need to unfold this drill and, and do that whole project. Um, you have to kind of check things over and order the parts ahead of time and then find a time to do the big projects. Try to squeeze little projects in between, like I'm doing a couple little things on irrigation engines. Um, or I, I have plans to, so hopefully I'll include you all uh, in those as I come to them. So Nathan's next little tiny project. This is the air intake to our John Deere diesel irrigation engine. And if you guys remember from watching our irrigation videos, we, uh, we have to use suction off of our pickup truck to prime the centrifugal pump. Well, we found out that you actually can get suction off a diesel engine if you take it off of the air intake. But, you know, an engine needs air to run and there's lots of airflow coming through here. The engine is actually already set up with a little suction hose and that's how we kind of figured it out down here below on the air intake. And I can, I can show the engine too. But anyways, we need a way to restrict the incoming air so that it sucks more out of the hose down here. So I'm essentially building a little uh, choke valve uh, here on the air intake. This thing goes on top of there. And uh, I wish I would have tried it over the summer. I wish I'd have just taken that off, put my hand over here or a cap over there and seeing if I could get it to prime because I'm just kind of doing this, uh, hoping that it'll work. Okay, so put a little handle on here and then I'll, I'll be able to know where I'm at. So this will be full open and that will be essentially fully shut. Choke it off, get suction, and then open it back up again. We'll see how it works. This has been another episode of welding pieces of junk together with Nathan. I'll even slap a little Krylon on there and make it look OEM. Oh yeah! Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.